mail bag time i've got some interesting things in here some probably not so interesting things but this will be interesting i see this thing being featured in a few videos in the future if this is what i think it is anyway don't forget to check out the merch i've also got a massive box behind me on the floor which i can't fit on my desk so make sure you stick around to find out what that is as well what's in that box will be featured in other videos as well it should be a repair item piece of gear to work on or not. Make sure you stick around to the end to find out what that big box is because of this box here and I've got a massive box to look at. Anyway, Ethernet cable, not too exciting. Cat 5e, yeah, one meter. Yeah, I went through a little phase of buying Ethernet cables. I don't know why. It just happens. If you haven't seen my Electronics to Beginners video series yet, go and check that out. I've been doing two or three videos a day. It's getting quite tiring to be honest. But it's going to be quite rewarding once it's all finished. It's good. In fact, by the time we see this, it probably will be finished. I expect. I'm not quite sure how the timelines go. What do we have here? SN74ALS04BN. So this is apparently a TTL device. I've ordered these months ago. Obviously, I just got them in stock because they weren't in stock at the time. Yeah, happens these days, doesn't it? Alright, next thing. Give me links down below for some of these things, maybe. Maybe a link for this. Might be a link for that. And it might be a link for this either. Oh, things are out of stock. They couldn't send me them all. Right. So we got some actual caps. Somebody will be happy, won't they? Who could that be? <laughs> Apart from me, obviously. Um, actual caps, six, uh, 50 volt, 150 microfarad, a couple of them. We've got this big bag here. And we've got some more. What are these? 105 degree rotor, I can see that much. Uh, 25 volt, 25 microfarad. Yay. Capacitors. Yay. Okay, first big box. Well, medium sized box. Well, then that's a small box, isn't it? If I've only got two, one's big, one small. Mm. Well, it looks like it's survived postage okay. It's got some slight creases on it where it's been squashed a little bit, but it's not looking too bad. The other big box I've got has got arrows on it to say which way up it's supposed to go. And the top of the box has been caved in. <laughs> like it's been dropped upside down. So I don't know how that's going to be. <laughs> Hopefully it's been packaged well enough. I actually stipulate always when I buy things. Oh, I can't get in there with that. It's not doing it today. Oh, my knife is getting... Oh, no. No, it's just a disaster. Anyway, so yes, I'm, I'm not sure how it's going to go. I always tip like how something should be packed when I buy it on eBay. I always specify, make sure you pack it well with like four inches of spacing around it and stuff like that. Sometimes people take exception to that. As you want these people. Oh, okay. Nice. It's a manual. Okay, there's more than this in the box. Actually, 7400 by Heathcote. Is this an original manual or is it a copy? Might be a bound copy. Yeah, it's a copy, it's a scan. But okay, it looks alright though. Looks reasonable. I have to see what the diagram stuff looked like in it. But uh, okay, that looks alright. Looks like a good copy. Peanuts. Okay. Let's try and grab the bubble wrap. So it's pretty well packed in some ways. Decent box, bubble, you know, peanuts all around it. Bubble wrap, not completely surrounding it though. As you can see, it's just got a wrap around front to back. Nothing on the sides, nothing to protect the corners. Hopefully the peanuts did the job though. Let's check in the box. So, anyone got any guesses? What, oh, I've already said what it is, a 7400. But it, what is a 7400, do you know? I might just slide this out, actually. How about now? Any better clues? It's a three core cable. It's an improvement, I suppose, but I'll be changing that anyway. I'll be doing a video on this thing. I'll do some refurbishment work on it, I suppose, too. Main selection, excellent. Wait for it, wait for it. Where's my screwdriver? Where's my screwdriver? Here it is. I don't fit. Oh, can't change the voltage. There you go. 240 volt, that's better. Always do that first. 
and there it is. It's a Heathkit Digital IC tester, and that's why it's called a 7400, to coincide with the 7400 devices. And apparently, when these were first supplied, when you purchased these things originally, they came with a 7400 IC. It's an interesting zip socket here. It's a push-pull socket. You sort of push, push it down and pull it up. Interesting device. But the idea is that with this, you can test ICs. You can put an IC in here, 16 pin max. So yeah, eight down each side. And you can configure these switches to do the function you want. You've got some different voltages up here. Five volts or 3.6 volts. Power switch up here. And you can choose whether you want five volts or ground. By like switching between that one and that one, it'd be five volts on ground. Or well, that'd be step and ground. So if you want to do step instead, you can push this button. That will step through like a clock's pulse. Or in that position is off, no, no connection. Or that's gas, gas discharge, which is a high voltage thing, which is it's like 60 volts apparently on the side. So be careful of that one. <laughs> so this would be if you wanted to step through and demonstrate how an IC works or test a function on an IC because you're not quite sure about it because maybe you've got IC testers but I don't show anything for that chip you could probably set up these inputs and test the chip manually just you know you give it this you know if it's like an AND gate you would turn on two gates and see if the output turns on that kind of thing when they're in your the state it means it's just using these LED indicators well I think they're neons actually I need to do a video on this thing I'll pull it apart do a bit of refurb on it that kind of thing and um, I think that should be good so when I purchased this thing, the, the seller was a bit upset about the fact that I said pack it with heaps of padding around it. Because, you know, when you do a purchase on eBay, you can specify a message to the seller. And it, that's always where I put in there saying, make sure you pack it with, you know, four inches of padding around it, that sort of stuff. To make sure that they do pack it properly instead of just chucking it in a box with absolutely no protection whatsoever. Which has happened to me. And people seem to think that you chuck it in a box, they don't, they don't care because they've got the money, you don't they just ship it off, your problem. So I specify that, so at least I've got some kind of recourse if something goes wrong and I don't actually follow the instructions or at least make an attempt to pack it properly. Now this guy took a bit of an exception to this. He said, oh, I've never had a problem, you know, all these years and stuff like that. Okay, that may be true. Maybe perfectly fine. Maybe he does a good job normally. But he did complain about the fact that I sp said this pack it a special way, as in lots of padding all the way around it, when I did the purchase, because he said oh, I could affect the price. Well, my perspective is if you're going to pack it properly in the first place, you'd have allowed for that size of the box. So it wouldn't matter to the price, would it? Anyway, I already opened this. Well, I cut it open as far as I got. Because I was waffling too much. So I've cut it open. I'm re-recording this, but let's see what we've got. This is as far as I've got. I haven't actually got any further than this yet. Let's see how good a job he did packing it. Lots of polystyrene. Okay. Probably has done a good job then. Let's lift these out. Yep, fully enclosed. Good job. Very good. So, you follow the instructions, obviously. And he does seem to have done a good job packaging this. It's fully enclosed, fully wrapped around. It's foam all around the outside. It's wrapped in plastic as well. So, down the sides as well. Yeah, it looks fine, at least on the top side. Hopefully the bottom's the same, but based on what the top's like, I think he probably has done a good job on that too. It's just funny the way the guy complained about me saying to pack it well. It just seemed to be weird. Anyway, <laughs> let's get this thing out. Yep, and the bottom is well packaged as well. Here's a padding in the bottom too. Excellent. He's done a good job. I don't have any complaints. So the question is, do you know what it is? Can you tell yet? Probably not. Yeah, I'll keep it closer. How about now? No? Right, moves on to the bench. Let's get this thing unwrapped. Let's find out what you got. Now, I've also been given one of these by CZUR. It's like an opening tool. Let's see what this does, shall we? Hmm. That works quite well. Because this plastic won't scratch anything. Now do you know what it is? No? There you go, how about now? That must tell you surely. Well, there you go. It's a Valhalla 2500 EP programmable AC to DC current calibrator. 
you know how I like my calibration gear and and the fact that my Datron calibrator can only do up to 1.9 amps and it makes it hard to test multimeters thoroughly you know you want to go to a higher current anyway I saw this on eBay well I actually saw a few of these on eBay there were some like push buttons on them and things like that as well and there's other things you can do and I saw this one I thought actually this one looks like a better version it seems to be loads of different versions of the 2500 they've got different formats some have just got LED indicators on the front panel some have got push buttons some have got almost nothing they're all very similar but different and it's quite interesting the way so many different variants of the same unit. There's like 2500, 2500E, EP, and there's a EN, I think it is. I think it's to do with the input loading or something like that. So apparently this one kind of works, but it's faulty. Which is perfect for me, it's exactly what I want. I always want something which is slightly faulty. So I'll be doing a video on this thing, and actually trying it out and see what actually works like. So make sure you subscribe for that. And also, click like if you like the fact I'm buying these things to refurbish them and get them working. If you like the ultimate review videos. Click like for that too. In fact, just click like. Just just go do it. Go on. I know you want to. Go on. Go on. Go on. Oh wait. Have you done it yet? Go on. But seriously, I'll be doing a video on this. I'll be pulling this thing apart and fixing it all, powering it up, and see what issues it has. I have an electronic manual for this, I'd like to get a physical manual as well. We'll see. Well, it's not for this exact one. It's for the 2500 series. I don't know how different they all are. I don't know what this is actually like inside compared to the manual I've got. I don't know, it could be completely different. Make it even more interesting, couldn't it? If you feel like giving me a one-off donation, there's a thanks button just down the bottom there somewhere. You click on that and give me a one-off donation if you feel like doing that. Also got playlist over here for things I think you should watch, there's a playlist over here, YouTube things you should watch. There's a subscribe link right here which you should have clicked by now because I've been nagging you. And there's a Patreon support link over there which means you can give me a monthly donation and help me support my channel or help me to buy things like this. This was not cheap. Postage was actually more expensive than the item. That also wasn't cheap. Peace